there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. The pen we're going to look at today is not new. It is not antique. It is not vintage, but it's old. The room is full of milkmen, some of whom are, uh, are very old. This is a Pelican M200 piston filler from 1985. Apparently there are different levels of oldness. Antique is a term commonly used to describe something at least a hundred years old. Vintage is a term that varies depending on the item discussed. Modern usage of this term denotes something that is at least 20 to 50 years old or more. That makes me vintage, I guess. Ugh. But purists will argue that this pen, which dates between 1985 and 1990, is not vintage despite it being 35 years old. So, if it isn't vintage, then the term people use for something old, but not old enough to be vintage, is collectible. This doesn't look like a Beanie Baby to me. A Beanie Baby collector resold it to her for? About 400 and he ended up being worth about 4000 But I'll refrain from calling it vintage, so. So let's take a look at this old Beanie Baby fountain pen right now. And here we are with the Pelican M200. This pen is on loan to me from my friend Ron. This was his late father's pen. If you've been following my pen journey, you will have already seen two of his dad's pens. The Parker 51 set from 1954, and the Parker 45 set from the early 70s. As far as I can find out, this pen is from the mid to late 80s. The model itself is the old style M200 with the rounded finial rather than the crown shaped finial of the modern Pelicans. This old style M200 was made between 1985 and 1994, and we think Dennis bought it in the late 80s. When I got this pen from Ron, the pen had not been used in over 20 years. It was full of old dried ink. <laughs> Too small and dry. Oh, well, I wouldn't say that. The piston didn't move, and the nib was severely corroded with the gold plating coming off. I cleaned it as much as I could, taking it to pieces as you can see here in this photo. I greased up the piston and it works fine. I polished all of the plastic and the gold trim and inked it up with Hiroshizuku Take Sumi. What I want to do is go over the parts and features of this pen, look at some measurements and some size comparisons, and then do a writing sample. Please stay tuned to the end of the writing sample where I will discuss what I like and what I don't like about this fountain pen. The pen came in this plastic clamshell case with this paper documentation that has a guarantee and filling instructions in different languages. So let's start from the top of the pen. Here we see the old style Pelican finial. The plastic derby top finial cap screws on and keeps the clip and the cap liner in place. The Pelican logo is etched into the top of the finial and filled with gold paint. This M200 model began in 1985 and the finial is called a derby. The logo on the derby finial has a Pelican with two small chicks. Maybe it's on this touchpad thing. The website, The Pelican's Perch, by Joshua E. Danley, has a great deal of information about everything Pelican, from the history of the company to the dating of various models. I will put a link to Joshua's website in the description below. It's worth a look if you're a Pelican fan. The page Dating a Pelican, shown here, has four criteria for dating a pen like this. One, the introduction of the model. Two, the cap logo. Three, the trim style. And four, the Germany versus West Germany marking on the cap ring. The M200 was introduced in 1985, and this one has the derby finial with the two chick logo. The trim has no ring on the end of the barrel and is marked West Germany on the cap band. This places this pen between 1985 and 1990 or 91. The finial holds the clip in place which is the classic pelican bill-shaped clip. It is springy and very usable. 
with a nice upturn at the tip, and it is gold plated. The cap tapers up slightly to the two cap rings, one thin and one wider, with the wide one having the words Pelican and W Germany engraved on it. The cap steps down to the barrel, which is straight until you get to the piston filling knob, which tapers down to a rounded end. I'm not gonna turn this now because it's full of ink and I don't wanna get ink everywhere. But when you turn the piston knob and the piston moves inside the barrel, the piston knob moves out and there's a small gap right in here. It shows you that the piston is there rather than here. The cap screws off and slightly under one turn and posts deeply and securely. This is good because this is a small pen and for people with larger hands, it is a bit short when it's unposted. And that cap does not back weight this pen at all because the cap, as you'll see in the measurements, weighs next to nothing. The top of the barrel has an ink window which is really difficult to see because it's full of ink right now, but it, it extends from about there to there. The section is part of the plastic body and does not come apart. The section tapers down to a small flare where you'll see the number five gold-plated steel nib. The nib has the words Pelican, the Pelican logo, and F for fine engraved into it. And here you can see some of that corrosion as this pen was left inked up for many, many years. And there's the look of the plastic feed. The entire nib and feed assembly unscrews from the section and can be replaced. A nib like this is around $45 US. To clean this pen, I unscrewed the nib and collar feed, rinsed it with water, and when it was clean and dry, I inserted a Q-tip into the section with a little bit of silicone grease on it and greased up that piston. And it moves beautifully now. Now it's time for some size comparisons and measurements, and then I'll be back with a writing sample. Okay, here we are with some size comparisons. This is the 1985 Pelican M200, and this is the 1950s Student Orienta piston filler. This is a Parker Sonnet and a Pilot Metropolitan. And here is a Visconti Van Gogh. And for some posted comparisons, here is the M200 again, the Orienta 1950s student model, the Parker Sonnet, the Pilot Metro, and the Visconti Van Gogh. <laughs> And now we're back with the writing sample portion of the review. Here we have a late 1980s Pelican M200. And this has a fine steel nib. The paper is Clairefontaine 90 GSM, and the ink today is Hiroshizuku Take Sumi. Let's check the wetness. This is a very, very wet pen. It's almost too wet, and we might see how that could be a problem in a moment. The line is definitely fine, and it is very smooth. And there is quite a bit of bounce to this steel nib. But as you can see there, 
it seems to run dry of ink. So there are some ink starvation issues with this nib. I would suspect the feed. Let's listen to it right, if it will write. So you can definitely get line variation, but uh, again, that feed, as you can see, hard starts. And the more I push it, the more starved the pen becomes. There you go. So I think a little bit of uh, surgery on the feed might be required or closing up those tines so that the pen isn't so very wet because it's so wide and wet right now. I can see on, with my loop, I can see some light between those tines. And uh, it might mean that uh, it's a bit too wide there. So we might have to close that gap down. But I'll work on this pen. It's a very nice writing experience. I can only describe the feel of the nib on the page as toothy. And James William Bottom Tooth. <laughs> like a pencil on drawing paper. It's not unpleasant at all, actually. It's uh, very unique. In writing with this pen for a few days, um, I'm finding that mostly with downstrokes, after a paragraph or so, you'll get a hard start. So that again speaks to some ink starvation issues with that uh, nib and feed. And as to reverse writing, <laughs> it's very scratchy as you can see, it's digging into the paper. And some quick writing, we'll see whether it keeps up. As you can see, the uh, nib on examining it with a loop is also exhibiting a little bit of baby's bottom. So it might be a combination of those things, the baby's bottom, the ink starvation issues. But uh, for a 35-year-old pen it uh, and a steel nib, it's feeling pretty bouncy. I might have to prime that feed with the piston. Now it's run. There we go. It's starting to come down. There we go. Now we have ink again. So I'm going to work on this pen a bit and see whether I can uh, improve its writing. But let's talk about what I like about this pen and what I don't like about this pen. Well, it's a classic looking pen that holds a lot of ink. It posts very deeply and is very comfortable in the hand. The nib, even though it's corroded, writes very smoothly and is extremely wet. As I mentioned earlier, the nibs are easily replaceable and readily available. Uh, about $42 US, you can get a new gold-plated uh, nib in different thicknesses pretty easily. And it might be something we might want to look at. Uh, I'll have to talk to the owner of this pen to see whether he's interested in doing that. What I don't care for so much is how small this pen is. Someone with smaller hands, and I have medium-sized hands, someone with smaller hands would find this pen very, very comfortable. The section is small but it is comfortable in the hand. This is a classic pen and the model, although it's evolved, is still very popular today and comes in many very beautiful finishes. In fact, Pelican seems to release a new special edition and pen ink combination each year with this model. Since 2012, there seems to be a pen of the year M200 culminating in this 2020 model. So there you have it. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to be notified when a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, 
Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.